Hi team, greetings everyone. In our previous session, we saw how to handle the dynamic elements, how to handle the shared elements in the repository section. In today's session, we are going to see a new concept called as variables. So what is this variable? Why do we need it? Let us explore it. So now let us understand what is a variable. See variable is nothing but a container used to store the data. Okay. Now why do we need a variable? So to avoid hard coding. What is this hard coding? So when I say hard coding, let us assume a scenario. I have three test cases, test case one, test case two and test case three where I have written the test cases and if you can see my step number 3 navigate to https google.com so in each and every script this step is repetitive so let us assume that I am automating this google application and I have used this step number 3 which is nothing but navigate to that particular url I have given the url I have directly entered the value here if you notice means I have given the direct url in each and every script so when I give the direct URL or the direct value that is called as hard coding. In your automation script, whenever you are going to enter the direct value, that value is called as hard coded value. Now, why we should not hard code? In automation, we should never hard code a data. We should always use a variable. Now there is a question arising why we should not hard code. So for understanding that, let us take a scenario. So I have a module and that module I have around 50 test cases. In all those 50 test cases, I have used this direct URL, which is nothing but I have hard coded the URL value. Now, my manager is coming and saying that the URL has been changed. Since we are working on testing, so when it is a testing environment, obviously the URL will change. So there is no one constant URL when it is a testing environment. So the test URL will al always keep on changing. Now, when the URL is changing from google.com to test.google.com, now, in the same module, I have to change the URL of the application in each and every script. So what I have to do, I have to change the URL of the application in each and every script. So how many times I am going to change the URL? 50 times because 50 scripts I have written. Okay. What if there are hundreds means thousand scripts? How many times I have to change the URL? I have to go to each and every individual script and change and then change the URL of the application thousand times. Don't you think this is a time consuming process? Now, let us use variables. Why we need these variables? So, instead of hard coding the value, what I will do, I will store that value inside a variable called as URL. So, this value, I will store it in a variable called as URL. Now, this URL variable, I will use it in my scripts. Instead of hard coding the data, I will store that data in a variable and that variable, I will be using it in my automation script. So now in the same module, I have again the same 50 scripts. In all those 50 scripts, I didn't hard code the data now. I've used a variable called as URL. Now if the URL is changing from this google.com to this test.google.com, so I no need to change the URL multiple times. What I have to do, I have to go to this particular variable and I have to change it only once. So once I change the URL here, it is going to reflect here in all the scripts. So change it once. And the URL means the changed URL will be reflecting in all the other scripts. So this is why we will be using the variable concept. So whenever there is a data, you should never hard code the data. You should always store the data in a variable. And then you should store that means and you should use that variable inside the automation scripts. So that your data maintenance becomes easier. Now talking about types of variables, we have three different types of variables. So one is we have local variable and another one we have global variable and the third one we have project environment variable in Fireflame platform. Let us explore one by one. So talking about local variable. So all these variables are differentiated with the help of their scope where you can access them. So when I say local variable, you can access the local variable only inside the particular script. So let me take an example. So we have two automation script, automation script one, automation script two. So here in the automation script one, I am creating a variable called as URL. So this is the value of that particular variable. So this is a variable, but I'm creating this as a which variable? Local variable in which script? In my first script. When I create this particular variable in my, 
since it's a local variable what is the scope of it within the particular script so i can access this variable only inside this particular script if i try to access the same variable url in my second script see this is my second script if i want to access this in the second script is it possible no it is not possible why because i have created this variable as a local variable when i say local variable what is the scope of it within the particular script so i can access this variable only in the inside the automation script 1 not in my automation script 2 why because this is a local variable now let me just move to the global variable so talking about global variable what is the scope of it within the project so when you are creating a variable as a global variable you can access that variable in inside the project so inside the project you can create hundreds of test cases or thousands of test cases in all those test cases you can access this global variable let me take the same scenario so we have again the same two scripts i am creating a variable called as url in my script number 1 now i want to access the same url variable in my second script is it possible yes it is possible why because i have created this particular url as a global variable so when you are creating the variable as a global variable you can access the variable in all the scripts under the project so this is called as global variable coming to project environment variable what is this project environment variable so when i say project environment variable whenever you are going to create a project there will be some default variables which will be created automatically inside the project that you cannot delete them or you cannot edit them so those variables are called as project environment variables okay what about the scope so when i say scope of the variable it is nothing but it is also within the project so once the project is means once the project is created along with the project some variables will be created those default variables are called as project environment variables and you can use those variables in the entire project so these are the three different variables that we have in the fafling platform so let us see how to use these variables in the automation scripts for that let me navigate to fafling platform and here as you see this is the script which i have written for registration process where i have written three steps one is open browser maximize browser and navigate to url and here in the third step if you can see it is a navigate to url let me just click on the steps and here if you can see this value i have entered as a hard coded value so this is called as hard coding entering the direct value but as we note means as we learned what we have to do we have to never do hard coding so let me create this as a variable how to do it so here this is a value whenever you enter a value in the text field you will be getting this particular icon called as create as variable so this create as variable will help you to create the variable i'll just click on it so once you click on it you will get this pop up create variable so here you have to give the name of the variable so this is actually the value right i want to give the name so now what i will do i'll just remove this and now i'll give the name as shopper stack url shopper stack url and if you notice something when i am giving the name of the variable i am using the camel case so if you can see first letter is in smaller means it is in smaller case and second letter means first word is in smaller case second words first letter in upper case and third words first letter is upper case this is called as camel case so here this is a convention that we follow in the fafling platform whenever we name the variables now this is the name i have given shop stack url so here coming to the type so what type of variable i should create when it's a url so when it's a url i have to access that url variable in all my scripts correct so if i am writing 1000 scripts or 2000 scripts whatever number of scripts it may be i have to use this url in all my scripts when i want to use this particular variable in all my scripts what is the type of variable i should be creating i should be creating a global type of variable so i'll just click on this drop down where i have option for global variable i'll just click on it so type is given as global and here this is the value of that particular url i'll just click on create you will get the success message and here in this particular text field if you can see shop stack url is visible that is name of the variable is visible and how do i say this is a variable once you place the cursor on it you will be getting two options view variable details edit variable okay now you can just click on this view variable details to see the variable details name value created by created on modified by modified on all this information will be reflecting if you don't want just close this 
And here we have this option to edit variable. Just click on this edit variable, which will allow you to edit the name of the variable as well as the value of the variable, not the type of the variable. You cannot edit the type of the variable once it is created. Okay, by mistake, I have created as a local variable. In that case, how do I delete it? How do I edit the type of the variable? In that case, just click on this cancel. So here what I will do, I'll just click on this update. So before that, let me, sorry, I'll just click on this update. So now by mistake, I have created a variable as a global variable. I want to make it as a local variable. So for that, what I have to do. So if you can see in this particular screen, we have this automation steps. As of now, we are inside the automation step. We have another option called as variables. Just click on this variables, which will navigate you to the local variable. Now we have a drop down option. Just click on this drop down option. We have local global project environment variable. So if I go to global variable, so here, if you can see, these are the variables available as, available as global variables. And if you can see capability, browser capability, web hub URL, capability to these variables I didn't create, but they are created automatically, which cannot be edited or deleted because these are default global variables, which will be created automatically. The one which I created is present here, which can be edited or deleted. So if I want to edit it, I'll just click on this edit button and here I can just edit it. And say, for example, this variable, I don't want it to be a global variable. I want it to be a local variable. In that case, what I can do, I can delete this particular variable using this delete icon. And if I want to create a local variable, what I can do, just go to this particular drop down, just click on this local variable. You'll be getting this variable option. Just click on this plus variable and easily you can create, give the name and value here. So this is how we can maintain the variables in the Fireflink platform inside a script. So here, if you can see, let me just go to automation steps. I have created this particular variable in the step number three. So now after this particular step, once after I navigate to the shopper stack, I have to verify whether I'm landing in a particular page or not. Correct. So now let me just go to shopper stack application. Let me open a new tab and I'll give the URL shopperstack.com. So once I give the URL, it is landing in the welcome page of the application. As a manual test engineer, I can see this particular welcome page, but as an automation tool, how it, how it can verify this particular page. So for that only in our previous session, we captured this particular element. Welcome to shopper stack. Enjoy shopping with us. Using my shopper stack means using my repository. I will be verifying this particular element. Now let me just navigate to the Fireflink platform. So I have already captured that element and stored it in the repository. So now I have to verify once after navigating to this particular URL, I have to verify whether that element is present in the UI or not so that I can confirm it is landing in the welcome page. For that, what I have to do, I have to just click on this add button. So I want to verify whether the element is displayed or not, right? I'll just type display. And here we have multiple NLP suggestion. One among them is verify if element is displayed. And here, if you can see, we are getting the description also. This NLP is used to verify the given element is present on the DOM of the page and visible. So it should be present in the DOM as well as it should be visible. So now when I see this is a description, right? So when I scroll down, so we can see the number of inputs and outputs of that particular NLP. So here if we can see the input one is string type and the name is element. So it is asking for the element name. Input two is string type and it is asking for element type. Input three, we have to give it as a web element and output, if you can see it is specified as Boolean. So what is the output of this? We will just discuss this. So once I click on this particular verify the element is displayed, the NLP is popping up and it is asking for an input which is called as element and it is giving us an output. So how do I say this is a output? Because this is highlighted with assign step return value to. So whenever you see this particular text, it is meaning that this NLP is going to return, return some value. So that is why it is saying assign step return value to. So this step is going to return something, assign some variable to capture that particular value. So that is the meaning of this assign step return value to. So now it is asking for the element. So it is asking, you want me to verify the element, right? Give me the element, I will verify. So what is the element I needed? I need to verify this particular element. Correct. Welcome to shopper stack. Enjoy shopping with us. Text in welcome page. So how this element is populating? Why? Because I have selected this means I have stored this element in the repository. So only it is reflecting here. So I'll just click on this. 
So what it will do, it will verify this element is present in the UI or not. Now it is asking assign step return value to. So what this NLP is going to do, this is going to verify whether the element is present or not. If the element is present, it is going to return me a boolean value. When I say boolean, only two options are there. One is true or false. Correct. So now when the element is present in the UI, what it will be returning? True. When the element is not present in the UI, it is going to return me false. So it is going to return me either true or false. I have to store that value inside what? So we learned a concept called as variables. Variables is nothing but is it is used to store the data, right? This NLP is going to return me a data. How do I store it? By creating a variable. I should create a variable here to store that particular data. So how do we create the variable? So you can give the name of the variable. So here I am going to give the name of the variable. Now, what, now whatever name you want, you can give. But what I am going to do is, I will derive the name of the variable from the NLP itself. What is the NLP? Verify element is displayed. So here I will give the name as is displayed. And whenever you are giving the name of the variable, it should be in camel case. Is displayed. If you can see, I have given the name as is displayed and it is in camel case. Now, is it a variable? So when it's a variable, what I said, you should place the cursor and you'll be getting an option to edit variable and view variable details. How am I getting it now? Because this is not a variable now. This is just a value. How do I convert this value into a variable? Using this create as a variable icon. Just click on this. So here I've given the name and here I have to give the type. So when I make it as a local variable, I can use it only, one, only inside this particular script. But I want to use this variable in all my scripts under the project. So in that case, what I can do, I can use this as a global variable. And in this case, this is going to capture the return value, which is given by the NLP. Do I need to give the value here? This variable for what purpose I'm creating for capturing the value, which is returned by the NLP. So here, no need to specify the value of the variable. Okay. What if I specify, is there any problem? If you specify the value also, it will be overridden. So here, if you want, you can keep this value or if you want, you can remove this because the purpose of creating this variable is to store the return value of the NLP, not to give the value. I'll just click on create now. So the variable is created. How do I say that? Because when I place the cursor, I'm getting view variable details as well as edit variable option. Now I'll just click on add. So the variable is added and the NLP is also added. So you have to understand the variable creation. Now in the step number three, I'm creating this variable to give the input, correct? Because here I am giving the value. Let me just cancel this. In the step number four, I'm creating a variable for what? For storing the value, which is not given by me, which is given by the NLP. When NLP is returning a value, you have to create a variable and store it. Whenever you want to give the value to the NLP, you have to create a variable and store it. The point is never hard code the data. Always use variable concept in order to pass the data. So in today's session, we saw what is variable, why do we need variable and what are the different types of variable and how do we use it in the Fairfling platform. Let us discuss the next topic in the next session. Thank you.